Hey everyone and welcome back to the Rowland Computer Museum. My name is Sam and we're back with another video where we'll be taking a look at a computer from the warehouse and this is the IBM PC XT 5160 and if that isn't the best name for a computer from the 80s, I don't know what is. The XT stood for Extended Technology and basically this was an upgrade from the original IBM PC, the 5150 released about two years before. So it is an extended technology based on that. So it's basically just got a few upgrades from the original PC. So the original IBM PC 5150 came with two five and a quarter inch floppy drives in the front. This one came with one five and a quarter inch floppy drive and a 10 or 20 megabyte Seagate MFM hard drive. And this was a big upgrade as opposed to the original IBM uh, PC. Um, the original IBM PC did not have a power supply that could support a hard drive or a hard card or anything else you wanted to put in. So the uh, 5160 had a, uh, a better hard, a better power supply to support a hard drive, which uh, towards uh, the mid 80s, having a hard drive was a big thing, especially for, for businesses. Uh, you could have uh, a second floppy drive put into the side of this machine externally. And in fact, one of the other additions is that the controller card for the uh, floppy drive actually had a built-in port in the back, so you could automatically just uh, connect another hard drive. So that was another one of the additions was that the controller card had that additional port. Now some of the other changes was that it removed the cassette interface in the back of the machine. The original IBM PC did have a cassette port which was rarely used. Um, in fact I could probably say it was barely used at all. So they removed that cassette port interface which of course lowered costs and uh, helped streamline production. Uh, the original IBM PC had five expansion slots and this one has eight total. And they did that because they found that they were going to have to use some of those slots Right off the bat, you're going to need a controller card for your floppy drives. You're going to need some kind of display card, either for monochrome or Hercules graphics or CGA graphics or EGA graphics later on. So you're going to need a controller card for your uh, your floppy drive, and you're going to need a display card. So you're going to need two cards right there, and a lot of people opted to have a memory expansion put in as well. On board, this computer had about 64K of memory, but it could have up to 640K, so sometimes the motherboard had maybe 256k and then you might have an expansion of another 256k on an expansion board or so. So those might be three cards right off the bat you're going to have and you're going to need. So on the original PC with five expansion slots, three of them are already going to be taken up. So it leaves you only with two expansion slots you might need for a printer or a sound card or something. So they want to expand how many expansion slots the machine had. It really gives you uh, much more room for customizing this machine. And one of the other minor revisions this computer had is that it had only one uh, dip switch bank on the motherboard. And it's a minor difference, but the original PC had two. And these dip switches you could use to, to uh, tell the computer how much memory to expect to be uh, loaded up, and also what kind of display you're going to be using. And again, it's just another way to streamline costs in manufacturing. But essentially, like I said, the XT is just an extension of the IBM PC. It's an extension of that technology. Now, back when you were to buy this new, it would cost between $4,000 and $10,000, depending on what options you wanted in this computer and of course if you want a monitor, what kind of display you wanted, if you want a bigger hard drive and things like that. So you could spend upwards of $10,000 on one of these machines back in the day. So you can see how a, a machine maybe like an Apple II, which cost me about $1,500, might seem like a better option for some people. That's because these machines were really basically for serious business users because they were just so expensive. But they were very well made and they were relatively very reliable. Now under the hood of this machine is an 8088 processor running at 4.77 megahertz. And again, it came between 64K and uh, 640K of memory. There was no sound card built in. There is a PC speaker. You could buy a sound card and put it in and you'd have to get external speakers, obviously. And the computer also came with the, uh, the Model F keyboard, uh, which uh, is a predecessor to the Model M. It had those buckling spring keys. Very reminiscent of the IBM typewriters, which everyone was accustomed to. And this is the best sound if you're typing on your own, and the worst sound to have if you are sharing an office with someone, because the last thing you want to hear is all the time. Now, in terms of collectability, the IBM market has, I, in my opinion, has gone much bigger in recent years. You can buy these machines before, I would say, pretty cheaply. Nowadays, if you want to buy a full IBM PC setup, whether it's a, a, the original 5150 and XT like this, or the later 80s, you're going to spend over $200 for a full setup, sometimes three or $400, depending on what it comes with. And if you find one of these local, I would suggest picking it up for, if you can get it for around $200, i say it's a pretty good deal. And again, this is my opinion as of the making of this video. The mark, that market can change, it can go up, it can go down. In terms of uh, usability nowadays for the IBM XT, the hard drives can start to fail. Uh, Seagate hard drives back in the day were pretty reliable, but nowadays they can, they can seize, they can freeze up. 
You can have all kinds of number of problems. You can bump, they can become corrupted. You can do a low-level formatting, as in my experience, to sometimes fix some of those errors. The floppy drives, for the most part, if you clean them and lubricate them, they run pretty well. But the problem is that the floppy disks nowadays might start to go bad. You can buy modern adapters to use flash memory and things like that with these machines so they can still work. But for the most part, these machines are pretty reliable, in my experience. The IBM XT, in terms of uh, functionality, I would put it probably above the 5150 because it has the extra card slots in the back. I would probably pick one of these up more if you're looking to actually use one of these for vintage computing. If you're looking for something for historical purposes, I'd try to shoot for the IBM uh, PC5150 because it is the original PC as we come to know it in terms of uh, hardware and architecture for a PC nowadays. Uh, but that's it guys, just want to take a quick look and show you the 5160 XT. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.